Hi, welcome to Fundamentals Friday. This one comes about because of something I said in a previous video. I mentioned that current flows through a capacitor. And I had a couple of people comment that, no, that's wrong. Current doesn't flow through a capacitor. You're crazy, Dave. Well, am I? Does current flow through a capacitor? It turns out it's an interesting question. Let's take a quick look at it. And when I say quick, I do mean quick, because to actually answer this and get to the bottom of it and understand it all actually takes a couple of semesters at university and lots of physics and math and Maxwell's equations and all sorts of stuff. But to answer the question, does current flow through a capacitor? The answer is, I can tell you right now, yes, exclamation mark. But with a little asterisk next to it. And that's where this video comes in. We're gonna talk about the asterisk. And of course it all starts out very basic, doesn't it? If you've got a battery here, a switch and a resistor, then if the switch is open, no current flows. But as soon as you close the switch, current I flows through there. Let's not mix up uh, conventional and electron current flow, shall we? That's a whole nother can of worms. But you close the switch, current flows, Ohm's law, all that sort of stuff. Electronics 101. It really is. But what happens if we put a capacitor in here like this? Well, of course, that's very easy too. In fact, it's almost insulting. You know what happens. The capacitor charges up, current still I, still flows in the circuit, and it charges up a voltage on that capacitor. In this case, uh, VC, the voltage across the capacitor, a capacitor when you first, if it's got no charge on it, when you first apply, start having current flow through the circuit, it has a voltage of zero. So that's this black graph here. So the X, uh, so the uh, Y axis here is the voltage across the capacitor. It starts to charge up until it reaches a point where it's fully charged and the voltage just sits at the fixed level, uh, which is your battery voltage over here. And of course the current starts off incredibly high because the capacitor is effectively a short circuit when you close that switch. So the current is at maximum and then it slowly tapers off a direct mirror image of that until the current goes to zero. So the answer to this question seems bleedingly obvious. Does current flow through a capacitor? Yes, I see. Look, current is flowing in that loop. It's in series. How else? Where else can it go but through that capacitor? And of course, you've got some standard formulas you learn in Electronics 101 to go along with this. Charge Q equals C times V. And then you've got I equals DQ, or the change in the charge over DT, the change in the time. Oh, some people, you know, that they don't like to use D in there. You could, you know, use like delta or something like that. It just means change. So the current equals the change in the charge on versus the change in time. And well, that's where that graph comes from. It's not rocket science. Current is flowing in the capacitor. And because charge equals C times V, you can uh, write that again, I equals C times dV dt, like that. And you know, and there's all sorts of equations for currents flowing in various circuits. So current does flow through a capacitor. Or does it? And just so nobody nitpicks, yes, I know it's actually IT in there. I didn't add the T in there. And if you put a current source in series with a capacitor like this, which is essentially what we did in the previous video, which caused all this ruckus to begin with, then the, uh, the T drops out of that and I just equals C times V on T. And the uh, VC, the voltage across the capacitor, will charge up, uh, will uh, rise in a linear fashion like that, just as we saw in the previous video. So there's current flowing in here. So it's time to ask ourselves, what is current? Well, electronics 101 again, right? Current is the flow of electric charge. And when you have conductors like you do in electronic circuits, they're made up of conductors, wires and resistors and stuff like that, then it's the flow of electrons through that circuit. Now, let's not get into drift velocity and stuff like that. There's a whole nother can of worms where the electrons, you know, move at like one millimeter per second through the entire circuit. Uh, 
Google that one. But yeah, it's just the flow of electrons in this circuit. That's why when you break the switch, no electrons can flow in this circuit at all. But is it a capacitor just like an open switch? Look, that, this symbol itself tells you that there's a break. What's the difference between a switch symbol and a capacitor symbol? It's, they're, all, they're identical, right? And that comes down to you, what you basically know about capacitors, right? They block DC and they allow AC or changing currents to ch uh, pass through them. Hmm. So now we'll take a brief look at inside a capacitor here and that requires a whole separate video so it's going to be very simplistic. Well, you know that a capacitor is just two metal plates like this or it can be you know, two bits of wire just sitting in the air like that, like a switch, remember? A switch has capacitance as well. Tiny amount between the contacts. Any two wires in any space is effectively a capacitor. Anyway, it's got two plates in there and it's got a dielectric material in the middle of it and what that does is actually creates when you charge up a capacitor you're actually uh, building up a charge on both of these plates they're going to be equal and opposite charges between the two plates and you're going to set up an electric field between the two plates but because it's like an open switch no actual electrons actually flow through the material and once again, we're talking about an ideal capacitor here in practice. Yes, there's a tiny little bit of resistance in there like that. So some electrons do actually sneak through the dielectric material, but we're just going to ignore that because, well, that's just going to confuse the issue. No electrons actually pass through a capacitor like this. It's just a capacitor is just defined in terms and understood in terms of electric charge building up on the plate. Yes, we've got current flowing into and out of the wire, for example, and current can flow down these plates because they're actually metal, right? You can get electron flow up and down these plates like this, okay? But, well, nothing can go through the middle. It's like a switch, it's open. No electrons can flow. So what's going on? How can current flow through a capacitor. It's sort of, you know, we know current flows through because it's a series circuit and well, you can actually measure it and you've got all the basic electronics 101 formulas that tell you current flows through a capacitor. But when you look at it in terms of electric fields and how it's two separate plates and an insulator in between, that's what a dielectric is, it's an insulator, be it air or mica or ceramic or whatever material it happens to be, no electrons can actually flow. What's going on? So to grossly simplify this thing, which as I said at the start, I have to do because this whole concept and understanding all this sort of stuff takes, you know, semesters of understanding at university and most people come away from it scratching their head anyway, trying to figure this st sort of stuff out. And it depends on how you look at it. And there's a big difference between uh, physics, fundamental physics and practical electronics as we'll uh, get into right at the end to close out on this thing. So to understand this, we have to look at electromagnetism for a minute and Maxwell and the famous Maxwell equations. Now, before Maxwell came along, uh, electricity and magnetism were thought to be two separate things. But Maxwell, incredibly smart dude, combined the two into theory of electromagnetism. And to cut the long story short, to make it all work, he had to come up with the concept of a displacement current that, um, in this case, flows flows through a capacitor. And that's how what we're using up here in all of our general electronics equations in a practical sense. So what it comes down to is that we've actually got two different types of current. There's electric current, which we explained right back at the start, is, you know, the uh, flow of charge and electrons. And, but we know that electrons can't actually go through an insulator in a capacitor or anything else. So um, what Maxwell came up with is a concept called displacement current. And that gives us a second definition of current. And in practical electronics, when anyone uses the term current, they're including both of these terms under the same umbrella. 
and to try and uh, separate them, then you start getting away from practical electronics into theoretical physics, and it gets nasty. So Maxwell, with this idea of the displacement current, it's oh, there's many different ways to look at it and try and understand the concept, but it is a term which he came up with, which was required and is required to complete the theory of electromagnetism and uh, electromagnetic waves and you know radio waves and the whole uh, concept that we know as electromagnetism today. It's an essential part of it, and that displacement current is what actually flows through or flows through. I use that in quote. Uh, marks flows through the capacitor, but that's why it's still valid to say that there's current flowing through the capacitor in the world of electronics, because essentially there is, because our day-to-day -day equations all assume and know that there is current flowing in this series circuit with the capacitor there, even though it's effectively an open circuit. And of course, uh, Maxwell just um, considered, well, didn't even consider the dielectric constant in here, even if it's a vacuum, he said, well, a vacuum is just a dielectric like everything else. It's just got a um, dielectric constant of one instead of, well, most other materials have a dielectric constant above one. But there's, it's just a dielectric constant. So that's how electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum. And it gets really, really nasty, and I don't have time to go into it. So as you charge up a capacitor, you're changing the electric field, you're varying the electric field between the two plates. And of course the electric current can flow onto the plates like that, and so current is flowing in to one plate and leaving the other, but what actually happens in the dielectric material is not electric current flow, there's not electrons actually flowing through uh, the dielectric material, it's the changing electric field between the plates actually also creates a change in magnetic field, and it's that magnetic field concept which causes the displacement current. It gives the equivalent current, except in terms of electromagnetics, uh, flowing through the dielectric material. So current is still flowing through. You've got I going in here, you've got I popping out there, and, well, what happens with inside the capacitor? Uh, it's not magic, it's just fundamental physics and how you understand a displacement current field in Maxwell's equations. And therein lies the trick. When you're on the conductor, i.e. the wire coming in and the plate, you can talk in terms of electric currents and everything's just fine and dandy. But once you leave that conductor and get into the insulator, i.e. the dielectric material, you've got to start talking in terms of uh, changing electric fields, which creates changing magnetic fields, which then uh, you can ha you have energy um, storage and transfer in these magnetic uh, fields. And that's how current is able to go through, and it all comes out in the wash in Maxwell's equations. It would take 10 boards worth of equations for it to all come out in the wash. But so, you know, you can go deep into the concept of how you're actually able to get current flowing through the insulator, but it does, because Maxwell's equations tell you it does. And a not too dissimilar thing pops up when you start talking about inductors. And it's like, well, how dare an inductor not pass all of its current through? How can there not be any current flowing through an inductor? It's just a bit of wire. It should conduct. Well, it's the electromagnetic fields in the thing. And that's uh, the sort of inverse relationship between capacitors and inductors. In this case, um, in capacitors, as the rate of change of the electric field goes up, the greater the current that can flow through this thing. And conversely, with um, inductors, then the uh, greater the change of the magnetic field, the less current flows through it. So there you have it. That's it in a nutshell, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to go into it any deeper. If you want to know about it, then Google the word displacement current and electric current and go into it, electromagnetism and Maxwell's equations and the whole thing, and you can spend years and years of your life trying to understand how or if current flows through a capacitor. But as I said, in practical electronics, yes, current flows through a capacitor. And when you use the word current, it means, it, it implies the combination of electric current and displacement current, i.e. the flow of actual electrons or electric charge through a conductor. And then when you don't have a conductor, i.e. you have a capacitor, it's a 
effectively another case, it's not a special case, it's another case of using a different type of current called displacement current. And it's a mathematical concept which uh, depends on how you want to interpret it, whether you're not a physicist or a practical electronics person. And that's the point. To say, to say somebody's wrong by, no, current doesn't flow through a capacitor, it's just crazy. It's of no practical uh, value whatsoever. Try and design any practical electronics by thinking that current doesn't throw, flow through a capacitor. It's just stupid. It doesn't work. So really, there's two different worlds going on here. There's the uh, fundamental physics world of electron flow and charge carriers and all that sort of, you know, jazz. And there's, you know, the high level macro practical electronics thing where we use all our basic equations and current flows through the capacitor and all the equations work and everything's just fine. And that's how we teach electronics. That's how we understand it. That's how we uh, design things with it. The fact that current does flow through a capacitor. So as I said, yeah, you can get into deep theoretical physics of how and if actually, and what the definition of the term current is, but it's of no practical value. Because at the end of the day, displacement current, it, it's no point thinking about it because you can't buy a displacement current meter and whack it in between the plates and measure the displacement current. It's a mathematical concept, effectively. So just, oh, don't worry about it. Electric current flows through a capacitor. Through. So theoretical physicists, go for your life. Me, I'm going back to the bench using my current meter to actually measure the current. <sighs> so, does current flow through a capacitor? Well, let's find out. Yep. Catch you next time.